Thank you for listening to Benton House Radio, and you're really going to learn today. For real. <laughs> Ain't that right, BB? Yeah, that's right. I can't wait. Yeah. All right. On the phones, we have straight out of Maryland, Dr. Harry Gawain calling us. Habibi Harry Gawain. Habibi Harry Gawain. How are you, doctor? Welcome to our show. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. Um, how I came across to you is by a friend of mine on Facebook. And uh, shout out to Farul Esrat. And uh, he told me to contact you to talk about uh, the victory of Adwa, which happened, the commemoration just happened uh, a couple of days ago in March the 2nd. And uh, so I called you to actually invite you on the show to actually explain to the people uh, about the victory of Adwa and mainly the history of Ethiopian general uh, King Menelik II, Emperor Menelik II, and so forth. Uh, but first of all, can you introduce yourself and tell the people of, about yourself, first of all? Yes, m my name is um, Abba Haragoen. I'm a physician by profession. Uh, I'm originally from Ethiopia, and I have a deep and abiding interest in the history of Ethiopia. And uh, yeah. the reason for it is Ethiopia has a very long history, and there are three things that I want your listeners to know. The yeah. first, first, uh, Ethiopia has a, a 3,000 year written history. It's mm -hmm. probably the only country in Sub-Saharan Africa that has such a, a long recorded history. And the second one is that Ethiopia has, is the only country in Sub-Saharan Sub Africa uh, that mm -hmm. has its own alphabet, actually. Uh, and so that made it easier to record our history. And the third one is Ethiopia is the only country in Africa that was never colonized during the colonial era. Yeah. So, so these are the three points uh, which can serve as a backdrop to our discussions about Adwa. Wow, wow. Um, so I just heard in Maryland they just uh, made it the month of March the day or the month for Adwa, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, particularly the the city of Silver Spring uh, has dedicated March 1st as a, a victory of Adwa Day. And so this shows you that Adwa is being recognized uh, in the West and that uh, it was not uh, a victory only for Ethiopia, but it was a victory for all black people and for all colonized people because mm -hmm. at that time in the late 19th century, no other people were able to actually defeat a, a European power and overcome uh, their uh, colonial intents. Mm -hmm. Ethiopia was the only country uh, throughout the globe, actually, as a matter of fact, in Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Uh, wherever you know the uh, Europeans went and colonized, they eventually had their will. But in Ethiopia, that will was broken on March 1st, yeah. 1896, by Emperor Menelik and the Ethiopian people. Okay. I saw a very interesting quote that just, just stuck in my mind for a long time, and it's uh, related to Adwa, which reads, uh, it's a post that somebody posted up. It says, uh, most nations have Independence Days. Uh, we Ethiopians have Victory Day, and we call it Adwa. So should that quote must ring a bell of awareness in many of us as Africans or black people's uh, minds to notice the difference between victory and of aqua and independence of any african nation if you look at um, you know the uh, victory of adwa was uh, a shock it sent a shock waves uh, in europe uh -huh. uh, as a matter of fact uh, the uh, it was reported in uh, most of the major uh, papers in europe the new york times in europe and america the new york times washington post and many of the Guardian and other uh, publications. And so it was very significant at the time. Uh, but uh, soon after, the Europeans realized that it is going to incite rebellion in other parts of Africa, and therefore they buried that story. It was not told again. It was actually struck out of even textbooks. Mm -hmm. so yeah. that, uh, 
that victory is not known. And so most Africans and also African Americans and people of the Caribbean and Latin America uh-huh. were not really aware of the victory that black people won against a major yeah. white colonial power 121 years ago. Right, right. And I uh, heard a lot about uh, King, excuse me, Emperor Menelik II throughout, uh, you know, listening to reggae records and things of that nature. And uh, they always talks about the lineage of Solomon and then went on to the the, the Emperor Menelik and on to Halle Selassie and things like that. Uh, so now can you tell our listeners about the victory of Atwa, what it's basically about? And uh, we just start from there and ask you questions as you go along. Uh, the victory of Adwa is, was a consequence of uh, of a conference that uh, took in Berlin, Germany, mm-hmm. about 12 years uh, earlier, uh, when uh, uh, Bismarck, who was the Chancellor of Germany, uh, actually invited representatives of most of the uh, for the, most of the uh, nations of Europe and the uh, U.S. also had a representative. And uh, the reason for that uh, Berlin conference was uh, so that there would not be so much conflict between uh, the interests of uh, aspiring colonial powers. And so they sat together uh, for a couple of days uh, in a villa in Berlin and divided the map of Africa into spheres of influence. And so mm-hmm. parts of it was given to England, parts of it to Portugal, others to France, and so on and so forth. And Italy, which was a new nation at the time, was allotted uh, Ethiopia, Somalia, and uh, and Libya. And so it was uh, a country that was cabled up from s- smaller countries by a person known as Garibaldi. And so they were trying to show that they were also up to snuff with the rest of the, the, the powers of Europe, such as uh, uh, England uh, and... Uh, France and Germany, and so it, they were, it was. It was actually a major success for them to have been allotted Ethiopia as part of their booty, mm-hmm. planned beauty, booty. And so, uh, Adwa resulted from you know 12 years of preparation by Italy to invade Ethiopia and assert its rights over its uh, putative colony. Mm-hmm. So, what eventually that just set it off? You know, saying the two. Uh, actually start the war or the battle in Adwa between Ethiopians and Italy? What actually set it off? That's an excellent question. Uh, basically, what set of the, uh, you know, the Italians uh, landed in Libya uh, and then started uh, buying property on the Red Sea coast, the Ethiopian coast at the time, small properties from uh, from. Uh, local chieftains and so they started uh, establishing uh, uh, a military base uh, on the coast and then they started building that up mm-hmm. uh, in preparation for uh, for uh, for war ethiopia was completely aware of it uh, and our emperors prior to that were trying to get to buy arms uh, from europe but the europeans were in cahoots with italy and they wouldn't uh, sell ethiopia any arms and so uh, Emperor Me- the Italians approached Emperor Menelik and uh, asked him to have a treaty uh, in which uh, certain uh, uh, rules and regulations uh, will be established uh, in the relationship between the two nations. And that treaty is, not, is known as the uh, Uchale, uh, Uchale Treaty. And that treaty uh, had two uh, clause, two, one clause which was different in the two documents. Uh, the one written in Amarinya, in our language, and the one written in Italian. The one written in Italian states that Ethiopia would be a protectorate of Italy and will do all its business through Italy, essentially um, uh, indicating that Ethiopia has agreed to become a type of, you know, colony, a vassal state of Italy. Mm-hmm. And so that, uh, when that was known, Emperor Menelik said, uh, you know, I, I will not respect any of this uh, a treaty, and mm-hmm. so the treaty, you know, was uh, was abolished by the Ethiopian government, and the Italians said, uh, you know, you have signed it, and that's it. We are gonna uh, establish our protectorate over you, and that was what actually triggered the Battle of Adwa. Wow, that's on nerve to come to another country and try to demand uh, 
ownership of your mind of making your you know making the decision for you you know what I mean and, yes. and it's crazy it's crazy and but it happened uh back in uh, March 2nd 1896 correct yes that is correct yeah and, and uh, so it is after many years of build up by the Italian side and the Ethiopian side also required a lot of uh, you know political will and uh, uh, by the emperor convincing the entire nation that there was a, a big enemy at the borders that would like to t that would that is planning to take everything that we value and cherish including our freedom and religion and so he he proclaimed a war uh, one year ahead of time uh, and yeah. told people uh, to move to the north um, at Adwa, actually, that was, you know, a war by appointment, actually. Mm. Wow, that's something. Um, so let's fast forward, like, during the battle. And uh, I think people, including myself, want to know, like, wh how did the Ethiopians won the war? Like, is, is it had something to do with uh, the weaponry or the style of fighting or... Or what? What do you think that is? You know, the Ethiopians um, mobilized a huge force, anywhere between 100 to 150 thousand people, uh, moved north to Adwa uh, in readiness for the battle. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I told you early, earlier, the European powers uh, didn't uh, sell uh, Ethiopia the arms that uh, it needed, and so. Our warriors were mostly relying on their horses, their spears and uh, and and swords, and also some of the rifles uh, which they had against this uh, modern army. Mm -hmm. And um, and so uh, the difference between the Italians and the Ethiopians was the Ethiopians knew the terrain; they were fast. Wow. Uh, and they were actually fearless of dying. That's what uh, part of the psychological uh, strategy that they used. Wow. Uh, the Italians, on the other hand, had uh, you know repeat uh, firing rifles, modern ones. They had uh, machine guns, uh, which were much more superior to the ones the Ethiopians had. Uh, but the Ethiopians waited for them. In ambush in uh, in uh, valleys and uh, crevices of the country, which were very difficult uh, for the Italians to to to, neg to navigate, wow. and so the Ethiopians were ready for them, and were also misinforming the Italians, sending the double agents in their midst, telling, giving them, feeding them false information, which the Italians readily believed, and so they fell into the traps the Ethiopians had set for them. And so it was a matter of uh, numbers uh, by by the Ethiopians, and totally fearless uh, way of fighting, and also good horsemanship that actually won the day. The battle was fought only for six hours. In mm. six hours, the Italians were defeated. Wow! E equal numbers of people were killed, and the Italians had to run away from uh, from Ethiopia. Wow. By noon, you know, the the the, the battle started at 11:30 a.m. and ended at noon. With the, Ethiopian, with the Ethiopians routing out the Italians, so completely annihilating and defeating them. Wow. Okay. That's actually a question I had, how long the battles uh, lasted. So what happened after that when Ethiopians won? Um, what happened in the country? Probably You said that uh, the Europeans hid the story of the Battle of Adwa because they didn't want it to be known across Africa. But as far as the relationships between Ethiopia and Europe, did they have like an embargo against them? That's an excellent question. Actually, what really happened was that there was a reversal of fortune for Ethiopia at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, because Emperor uh, Menelik was a very wise leader and he was very charismatic. And uh, once he came back to his capital city, Addis Ababa, he started inviting newspaper people from Europe and America. Uh, and um, uh, he. Uh, actually enticed the European traders uh, mm -hmm. to come into Ethiopia, into Ethiopia, even though uh, their governments may have been reluctant to sell arms and other technologies which he really needed to improve his country. He was able to outmaneuver them by hiring foreign agents who would go into Europe incognito, 
buy whatever he needed, and he established uh, a modern nation, actually. He built a railway line from the capital city all the way to the coast, telegraph lines, he imported cars, he established, uh, actually, a telephone system, which was not even available in many countries uh, in Europe at the time. Wow. Um, and he, he really modernized the city. He built roads, um, communication, postal system. He really created a modern state uh, until his days, you know, in uh, 1913. He really transformed our country, you know, from, uh, from a very backward uh, nation. By the time he died, we had uh, a modern nation with several European embassies. Even the U.S. had opened the allegation wow. in Addis Ababa. Yes, so let's let's talk a little bit more about Menelik. Uh, a lot of people want to know, like, how did he become emperor? Is he related to Haile Selassie? Are they related? He is related to Emperor Haile Selassie. Emperor Haile Selassie's father, um, Ras Mokonen, uh, was his cousin. Their uh-huh. mother, their, her, uh, Menelik's father and Ras Mokonen's mother, uh, Tananyur, were brother and sister. Mm-hmm. And so he's... Uh, he's uh, He's his grand uncle, uh, in, in, in a way. So they come from the same family of uh, Solomonic kings of Ethiopia, uh, which was established uh, in our uh, legends from the time of the visit of Queen Sheba to King Solomon in Israel, as told in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so we have um, a book called the Kabernegas, uh, which is the annals of the kings and emperors of Ethiopia, which... Uh, actually depicts exactly how this lineage ended up both in Menelik and Kadamoy uh, Haile uh, or Emperor Haile And so they come from the same lineage and the same family. And the lineage of the throne is still going on today? Uh, well, uh, we now have, you know, com- you know, in 1974, the, emperor, the government of Emperor Haile Selassie was overthrown by a military coup. Mm-hmm. Uh, and since then, uh, we have uh, another. We had another government, you know, take over, and so the imperial family uh, is no more ruling Ethiopia. Mm. I have a, a question throughout the uh, social media, and I can like relate it to you right quick. And uh, one of the question is, why Menelik is not celebrated as Mandela or Martin Luther King as people do today? And that was from Abel Estrat. Shout outs to you. That is. You know, one of the saddest, uh, uh, you know, things in history. Um, you know, uh, mm-hmm. what um, what um, Menelik did for Africa and the colonized world is much larger than than what Mandela has done. <laughs> uh, you know, Mandela has done great things. Yeah. People <laughs> celebrate people like you know Mahatma Gandhi and 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 other people. And I think it is all because of the racism of the media and, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the coverage, uh, as I told you, uh, in the past once the Battle of Adwa was, was passed, then there was a huge cover-up yeah. of what happened in Ethiopia so that it, does not, it would not interfere with the colonial ambitions of many European nations uh, throughout the African continent and other parts of the world. And so... It just uh, beginning to be known. I would say uh, one of the most important things uh, that happened is uh, a book recently that was written by a professor uh, uh, Jonas uh, of Washington State University, which revived you know the entire uh, Adwa uh, history uh, by making it famous, uh, and it it, has, it is becoming increasingly an academic subject in which people are learning in, uh, in, in many universities now uh, in the U.S. I think in the future, more and more people will know about, uh, about Menelik uh, and his uh, contribution to the history of uh, colonialism. Wow. Uh, I must say that he's the first, uh, he's the first successful anti-colonial leader of Africa. Mm-hmm. And there's also some things that being said based on another question saying negative information about Emperor Menelik II dealing with being a war criminal and I think it's related to the Oromo people in Ethiopia. I'm not saying that it's, it's right or wrong or whatever. I'm just emphasizing that Emperor Menelik is also Oromo 
by heritage. Of, is that correct? Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, uh, Emperor Menelik was an empire builder, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, many others. Um, you know, empires are built not through negotiations, particularly at those times, but through uh, a process of warfare. And, and Menelik was trying to save Ethiopian land from being colonized by the surrounding colonial powers. And uh, mm -hmm. so there were obstacles and there were wars mm -hmm. of consolidation. I mean, people have been have been harmed by these wars, uh, but this is the history of the world. Menelik has not done anything which was different than many other right. uh, world leaders. Right. And so to just think of Menelik as uh, an enemy of Oromos is totally wrong, because some of my ancestors were Oromos, they were fighters under Menelik, they were uh, some of his, his generals. Menelik went and won Adwa not just with a, a, an army of uh, derived from a single ethnic group, but the vast majority of uh, his army was made up of uh, Oromo horsemen and fighters. Mm. And so without the Oromo, Menelik would have never won Adwa, and without the Oromo, Menelik would have never uh, built uh, the Ethiopian empire uh, that we know of. Mm. And so uh, there are people who have, uh, you know, retrospectively analyzed what happened in the past with modern eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and so, you know, history has to be uh, contextualized, understood in the context in which it happened, rather than sort of, you know, like Minalik was not, for example, uh, elected as president by the people. You know, there were no elections at that time. People had her own hereditary leaderships. Mm -hmm. And so Menelik was great, not just because of Adwa, but because of his consolidation of the empire and building, you know, the modern Ethiopian state that we have now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there any, uh, well, first of all, I, uh, I got to thank you again for being, I guess, to actually just tell us a lot about this history and especially this very historical event, the uh, victory of Adwa. And, and, um, so, uh, but what is your main focus that you want to release to uh, our listeners about Ethiopia in general, or or, or anything that re related to this. Um, you know, I would like your listeners to pay attention to Ethiopian history because they will learn a lot. Ethiopia is uh, the origin of mankind, you know, according to the discoveries that have been made uh, in uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, Lucy was from Ethiopia and. Uh, uh, the uh, current, uh, you know, human species, Homo sapiens, started in Ethiopia about 200,000 years ago. And Ethiopia was the cradle of African civilization. It mm -hmm. was civilized, the civilization in Ethiopia is as old as that of Egypt, and maybe even older by some. Uh, and so Ethiopia's unique history is a unique history of black people. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the textbooks have short-changed short uh, black people about what happened in Ethiopia and for the reasons that I outlined earlier. And so uh, I would urge all people interested in in Africa to read Ethiopian history. They will understand the continent through Ethiopia by reading Ethiopian history, uh, what Africans have been able to do throughout the last 3,000 years. It's mm -hmm. just a microcosm of the continent. It It reflects the history and culture of our continent in a dramatic fashion. Ethiopia is not just made up of one ethnic group, but it's made up of, you know, close to 80 or more ethnic groups with uh, several backgrounds, Semitic, Hamitic, um, people of all sorts of uh, derivation. And so it's a microcosm for Africa. It's a microcosm for all black people. Mm -hmm, and course. it is a history that will make everybody proud no doubt, no doubt. All right, uh, I think that's it. That's all we have for you. I mean, I wish Thank I had you. more questions and more time. Yo, what you think, BB? I'm like, get ready I learned to so crack much. more this books is... open about Ethiopia, for real. For yes, real. I learned a lot, so this, is re this was really great, and it should come back sometimes. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, folks, what we're going to do is give you more music to rock with, but first... We're going to play something from an artist from Ethiopia to tell you more about Adwa, all right? So give the holler at 501-433-0088. And uh, 
yo learn the history learn and study the history of all african nations all right and uh that's what's up also caribbean nations and also any nations that's that's are righteously about us as a people all right check it out y'all benching our radio